My name is Thomas Roth and I'm the director of the Sleep Disorders and Research Center at Henry Ford Hospital. And today I talked about behavioral treatments of insomnia. And they, they pretty much consist of, of cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, which has a lot of components to it, including something called sleep hygiene, which I think is incredibly important. But what I'm going to focus about on today in this discussion is, is sleep restriction therapy. And sleep restriction therapy seems to be a common ingredient in all of the various permutations and combinations of CBT which has been done, including you know, people doing it with brief stints of, of CBTI, people doing CBTI online, and things like that. So it's very amenable to a variety of interventions. Sleep restriction therapy was developed by Dr. Arthur Spielman from City College of New York. And, and it has a very simple, important premise, and, and, and that is that patients with insomnia, relative to the time in bed, sleep less than the time in bed. As a result, they come in complaining of increasing wakefulness during the night. It takes me four hours to go to sleep, I wake up five times a night. Not that people come in and say, I just don't get enough hours of sleep. More commonly, they talk about the wakefulness they experience at night, whether that's in latency, whether that's an early morning awakening, whether that's in, in awakenings during the night with difficulty falling back to sleep. But in any case, whatever it is, the goal of sleep restriction therapy is to decrease the amount of wake time. And the way it approaches that is by increasing homeostatic sleep drive. Sleep is driven by two things, homeostatic drive, and two, by circadian time. I'm just going to be talking about homeostatic drive. So very clearly, homeostatic drive simply reflects on the fact that the, the less sleep you have, the greater the drive for sleep. And the more sleep you have, the less the drive for sleep. Okay, so it's not that important. You know, not that common. You eat a lot, you're not that hungry. You don't eat very much, you're very hungry. Same thing here. So sleep restriction therapy tries to increase homeostatic drive. So if you have an insomnia patient, as an example, who spends eight hours in bed, not uncommon, and we've shown some data today from our laboratory, that people with insomnia do spend roughly the same amount of time in bed as people without insomnia, despite the fact that they sleep about an hour to an hour and a half less per night. So if you have a patient who walks in and says, my, you know, my difficulty that takes me an hour to go to sleep, or half an hour, and I wake up and I'm difficult to go to sleep. So the first thing you want to ask them is what time do they go to bed, what time do they wake up? And you want to determine how much time do they spend in bed. So let's say this person spends eight hours in bed, which many patients with insomnia do. But then you ask them, how many hours do you sleep at night? And they only sleep six hours. But it's very important to understand is that that means they have two hours of wakefulness during the night. And that is what sleep restriction therapy attempts to eradicate or improve. So that person who's sleeping six hours out of eight hours has a sleep efficiency of 75%, six over eight. And what's very, very important to understand is the treatment then consists of limiting the time in bed to that usual total sleep time. So if you're only spend, if you're only sleeping six hours of sleep, I only want you to spend six hours in bed. You should not really go below five and a half hours, no matter how many hours they say, because people can get sleepy. But very importantly, so you're only sleeping six hours, I want you to spend six hours in bed for the next two weeks and give me a call back. <clears throat> so what's gonna happen the first couple of days, they're only gonna sleep about five hours because they've lost two hours in bed or they're going to sleep five and a half hours. But at the end of the two weeks, if their sleep efficiency is now about 85 or 90 percent, you increase their time in bed by 15 minutes. So instead of spending six hours in bed, you now spend six hours and 15 minutes. And, and then if their sleep efficiency is still, the pressure still stays up there, and they still have a high sleep efficiency, you can increase it to six and a half hours. Okay? And very, very important, you keep fixing that number until there is no further improvement in their sleep efficiency. So in other words, increasing time in bed no longer maintains that sleep efficiency of 85 to 90 percent and now decreases to where it was in the beginning of 70 percent or 75 percent. So you increase time in bed so long as you maintain a sleep efficiency of 85 to 90. And that's a very important thing. And at that point, you've, let, you've achieved the level of time in bed which is ideal for this patient. So what that will do is will one, most importantly, and most frequently occurring, will in fact decrease the wake time in bed to almost nothing. Two, in many cases, it will increase total, it'll decrease sleep latency, it'll decrease the wake time during the night, 
and basically it'll really get rid of the wake time during the night. So this is a very effective t treatment. It's effective in young people, elderly people. It's effective in anybody who's ever been trying it. One of the biggest concerns associated with this, well, when you first initiate this treatment, you, you're limiting the time in bed, they're not getting enough sleep so they can be sleepy, so you want to monitor their sleepiness. Recently there have been papers showing that you do get sleepy with this. So again, sleep restriction therapy is a very simple treatment. After a careful history, you can do most of the management of this patient by phone or by email. I mean, there's easy programs of how to do that. People with actigraphs now or these snap bands that, that people have can do this almost automatically. You don't have to calculate it. There's a lot of computer stuff to be able to manage this almost automatically. So sleep restriction therapy by Dr. Spielman is, is a very important intervention in our field of the management of insomnia. Again, it's not the only component of CBTR. Things like sleep restriction, stimulus control therapy are very important and, and as can be sleep hygiene. So I, I want to encourage you to sort of think about the use of some of these behavioral